At Natonga Sun Division, I mostly operate the area scan, which is a large gauge film scanner. Uh, it can scan 16 and 35 millimeter film uh, to up to 6K, so 6,000 pixels across, which is really big and nice. So that's um, the bulk of what I do. Also, I do a little bit of vault work and uh, kind of a little bit of film prep and whatever's needed. But yeah, the majority of what I do is scanning uh, films and uh, wrangling the masses of data that come out at the other end of the scanning process. In order to scan uh, even say a short uh, 60 millimeter personal record like uh, this item, you, you, the process is quite complex. Like uh, initially somebody would say, right, let's digitize this item. They would make a work order. That work order would contain in it uh, a request for a vaults administrator to go to a vault and pick up the physical item and bring it out. That's uh, 20 kilometers away. So he finds a moment to go and bring that back and then that goes to our conservation team who then have to frame by frame wind through the film and just check that it's actually going to be physically able to go through the scanner and check the level of shrinkage because the film shrinks over time as well. Make sure it's not going to break, um, clean it, uh, add leaders to make sure that it's not going to fall off at the end or the start um, and prepare the film for scanning. From there they make a little report telling us how long it is, what sort of film stocks it's been uh, printed on, um, what generation it is, whether it's print or dupe negative or master negative or you know, and um, then give that to us, the report with the actual material and then we'll put it on the scanner and scan it or prepare it to be scanned. So then we have to create uh, one or several jobs for the scanner to actually go through and go right from frames 0 to frame 600, we've got this type of film from 601 to 800, we've got this type of film and so on and check our focus, make sure the calibrations are all right and then we can hit scan and leave it and so that's about two and a half frames a second so that may take all afternoon to actually do the physical scan of this short 10 minute item. Um, and then once that's complete then we can um, open up the file and have a look at it and what we've done, um, make sure there's no glitches, um, no missing frames, uh, make sure the calibrations are all correct uh, look at the way it's captured the the, the light and make sure nothing's um, crunching or, or anything like that. And then from that stage we can pass it off to be uh, graded or you know converted into a quick time or wherever it's going from there. But so you can imagine that's the process for a 10 minute personal record for a feature film it's just even longer. So it's a pretty massive exercise. So there's two approaches to obtaining images um, when you're scanning uh, films. Uh, one is continuous, uh, where you might have a line sensor which the film constantly passes over and a sensor picks up each line and combines them to make an image. Uh, and then you have intermittent scanners where the film passes over a sensor, stops, takes an image of the full frame and then moves on to the next frame, stops and then continues in that way. Um, the ARRI scan is an intermittent scanner, so that um, moves the film over, stops and takes an image. Um, so that's, that can be a bit slower, um, although the ARRI is really quite fast for considering everything that it does. Because what it does is to get a really good extended range of light in the image, it actually flashes twice, um, once at the normal brightness that it's calibrated as the amount of light that it needs to pick up the image and then again much brighter um, so that it can pick up the detail in the most dense parts of the film and then it combines them into one image and then on top of that it also does flashes separately for red, green and blue and it does so it does the red, green and blue twice and then also potentially does a, a separate flash for infrared if you're doing a dust map because it can also detect uh, dust and scratches and pits in the emulsion and try to correct them 
on the fly as well. So that's potentially eight flashes per frame. And then also on top of that, it um, does a task called micro scanning, where um, the actual sensor for the scanner is 3K, um, but what it does, which kind of blows my mind, is it microscopically moves the scanner four times to um, capture, capture the image in more detail. Basically it takes, if we look at my hand, it goes, uh, take photo here, photo here, photo here, photo here, and then combines them together to make an ultra detailed version. Um, so that's how it gets up to 6K. Um, so it does that and does the separate flashes for each. Um, and it can still manage to somehow do like 2.5 or three um, frames a second. So it's a very busy machine. So that's, that's uh, an intermittent scanner, uh, the ARRI scan, and then we've also got the flash scan, uh, which is a continuous scanner. And that works kind of more like a telecine where it kind of just uh, rolls through and captures the image uh, as it goes. But in both cases, it saves each frame as a separate um, DPX file, which so it makes a folder of individual images, like one per frame on the film. There can be issues which vary from one negative to another. If there's physical splices in the film, that splice can cause the focus to shift on, this, on the frame immediately after the splice, but just because the film will be raised on one slightly more than the other. Um, so then you have to program the scanner to do a separate focus just for that first frame of that shot, and you have to program it to do a separate focus for the frame after that and subsequent frames for the rest of the shot. You have to go right through every separate shot in the entire feature film and make that adjustment. Um, so of course you've got to work out where each cut is in the entire feature film and then make that make those changes. So yeah, when you're working at the length of a feature film it becomes hugely complex. Uh, and then you've got to do the actual scanning which happens at around about two and a half frames a second. Um, and then if you have any problems, obviously you've got to go back and address them at two and a half frames a second. And of course, every time you do any, any scanning, you've got to make sure that you can watch it down and um, check that there is any issues. So every time you do a scan, you watch what you've made, look at it in detail, you know, look at it in scopes and check that you've got the levels correct. Um, so there's a huge amount of um, quality control that goes into everything. Uh, yeah, which, which can slow things down. Then, of course, once you've actually signed off the fact that you're happy with it, then you've got to move it and onto another drive, which with this sort of volume of data can be an overnight sort of thing rather than a stick it on a thumb drive or you know, send it to a Dropbox kind of exercise. Files can be pretty huge. 2K is kind of just slightly above what we call HD at the moment. Um, so that's 20, 48 pixels across the frame, and that can be really big in itself, like a feature film would probably be a good two or three terabytes, so that's a th two or three thousand gigabytes, so that's not going to fit on your little thumb drive. Uh, and then you might have several versions of that as well. We might scan it at a bigger size than that, so about two and a half, so that's even bigger still and then uh, ha have that bigger raw scan so that we can then uh, do things like stabilization and then size back down to the, the final size that we want. So that increases the size again and creates another generation. And then of course once we've done those scans we have to store them on LTO tapes which are an archival format for data storage uh, and we do two copies of everything um, so that again doubles the size. So for a raw scan for a feature film that's originally, say, two and a half terabytes, uh, you end up with a copy, your original copy that you've scanned is two and a half terabytes, and then you make a master LTO that's another two and a half terabytes, and then a duplicator LTO, and that's two and a half terabytes. And then there's all your working files, and then your final exported feature film, which should probably be another two and a half terabytes. And then you have to make a duplicator and a master of that, which is another five terabytes. So you're looking at about 10 terabytes already 
and then you can start working in 4K, which doubles everything, or actually almost triples it. So there's a lot of data, and it's all sort of just slightly bigger than is easy to move with today's technology. Um, so, yep, everything moves slowly, and it's big. <laughs>